Welcome back to M Hood Fishing, everybody. Today we're gonna do fancy hobo pouches at camp today, and we're gonna fish for catfish too. Come on. All right, this is an acorn squash. First, I want to cut the bottom off, and I'll show you why. I don't want to go too deep, just enough to where it'll sit like that and not roll around. Now I want to cut the top off. With this spoon, I'm going to break through the rest of the top, just like so. Look, it's kind of hollow, it's full of seeds. I want to get this all out with the spoon, just like you would with a pumpkin. Check out the seeds, kind of like pumpkin seeds. Acorn squash is a winter squash, that's why they look very similar. Well, it's a squash. I've kept this and I'm keeping this, but I want to cut that stem down a little bit if I can. Scissors are not the way to go. Pruners are the way to go. Nice. This is risotto. Don't need a lot. Normally I would let it cool down, but I just don't have the time today. I think that is enough right there. Out of the kitchen, out, out, out. Every time I make risotto, my red bone freaks out. This is a allspice, just one a little bit. This is nutmeg. I'm gonna put like a two or three pinches in here. Cinnamon. Not a lot. That's bacon. <laughs> but I'm sure you knew. I've got like two or three strips of bacon folded in half here. I'm gonna take this fillet knife. Ah. There we go, that's working now. Cutting strips. One more time, with the bacon turned around this time, cutting those strips into little tiny pieces. All done and going in the bowl. This is probably gonna end up being too much to stuff in there, but that's okay. Mix it all up. I'm just gonna get as much as I can in there. Looks like almost all of it's gonna go in. If you didn't know what a hobo pouch is, it's basically stuff wrapped in tin foil. And I have it on authority that the hobos of today do like to get fancy. I watched Hobo Shoestring about two weeks ago wrap some pork chops in tin foil and whole green onions and asparagus and with some other stuff pretty fancy came out pretty good he didn't spend a lot of time showing his cooking but yeah he did do it on a campfire out by a camp off some train tracks if you don't know who hobo shoestring is he is a train hopping youtuber someone i watch a lot we are going to oh we almost forgot the cap as you see i put the little plug in there and i got the cap and it almost all fits back together which is okay because the tin foil is going to keep it all together i'm going to crumple that right there like that and then bring the other bit like this first course is done here we go Look what I spent on this, $6.28, but believe it or not, this amount of Brussels sprouts will last me um, a couple of weeks or less, about almost two weeks, because I don't eat very many every time. These are big ones. Look at that. Look how huge those are. They used to be a lot cheaper. These are Brandon prices. Six. We want six so we're gonna go ahead and cut these butts off see how dirty looking they look but we don't want to go too deep we just want to get that spent looking part off that right there some of these outer leaves might have some bad spots on them if they do just take them off and throw them to the side last one I am gonna rinse these all right wrapping each one of these 
and bacon. Let's see how many strips that'll take. That's one. I think that's gonna be good. Fully wrapped, now it's time to add some stuff. I'm just gonna do fennel and one more thing. Cracked pepper. This is the only other thing, fennel and cracked pepper. And I'm adding a lot of this. Unlike the acorn squash, I'm gonna wrap this a little more. The outer rind of the acorn squash is going to protect it from getting burnt, but we need to do a little more for the Brussels sprouts. Already, these are the only two things I'm gonna cook this time. Now it's time to go. Just hit the levee. This is a Saturday, lots of people out. I don't know if I'm gonna get the spot that I want. So I'm totally loaded here. I got four rods in case, in case people are all crowded up in that one spot that I want today. I might have to go to another spot on the rocks that I don't wanna to go to. So we got mono, we got braid. We're all good to go. We're all loaded. Now we just gotta get down the levee and see who's down there. I'm gonna cruise down there at 20 miles an hour. Oh, that wind is on me. Let's get up to. There we go, up to 20. All right, we're checking the first spot. I don't see anybody so far, we might be good. Let's just see where the river level is here. We are just coming a couple hours after low tide, so it could be muddy right here, but the river is at up around 4.5, so I think it might be just okay. There's a little bit of mud in front of us, but to be clear, we have already come past low tide. That was about two hours ago. It is after four right now. So that means we got an incoming tide. Uh, it's just, I like this spot for what I want to do. I got a lot of space. I don't have to run around on rocks. We might get muddy though, but come on. Comes with a bucket. All right, this is the fire ring we're gonna use. It's already here, ready to go for us. It's got some weeds in it, but it's got a major problem. That's too close, because I'm making a big fire, so we gotta do some pruning. All right, just did not want that hanging over my fire. I am gonna burn driftwood tonight, but I'm not starting this fire with driftwood. That doesn't always work. We wanna find non-driftwood stuff. Driftwood sometimes can seem dry but be wet at the core. Plus, well, I don't always like to cook with driftwood, but it doesn't matter tonight because we're wrapped in tinfoil. But yeah, driftwood from the river can smoke really weird, really bad smells and you never know. Two piles we're building. Twiggy stuff, not twiggy stuff. Pull an anchor. Might be another one that shows up and takes that spot later, but that's cool. Wow, so much driftwood. There it goes. Got plenty of fuel here, but I need to do something about this ring. It's not quite good enough. See how there's all kinds of scattered rocks in our work area that we could trip over tonight as we're fishing? Let's pick them up and build this ring up better. So I kept that the original size quite huge, I know. I don't really need it that big, but somebody else might. I'm not tearing it down when I'm done. This is that kind of spot where I don't need to do that because I'm gonna come back and reuse it and I'm sure someone else will. Families show up and fish here. That's probably why that one is that big. And then there's this one here. So yeah, you're right. We're gonna have a big fire, not just because I'm cooking, but it is gonna be cold tonight. It, We'll get down to 40 degrees tonight. I don't know if I'm going to be here that long, but definitely gonna be here for several hours. I wanna start these. I wanna not put them on the flames though. If you look at your fire, if there's a wind, you see where the wind's coming from? It's coming from over there. See, it's blowing it this way. So what we wanna do is put these on the rocks over here, about that one there, 
and that one there that's because the wind is blowing the heat that way so they're only outside they're not going to burn they're going to slowly cook and when that burns down to coals i can put it more in my ring on the coals but there's no reason to not start it we can go ahead and start look at this I'm trying to get my fishing gear together and i turned around and looked i threw a piece of driftwood on there look at that smoke see how greenish darkish it is over there towards the far end smells horrible too glad i don't have a steak on there i'm gonna do the same sort of thing that i've been doing in the last few videos one big bait one small bait but with my 12 footers and 80 pound braid this time that is an eight dot octopus style circle hook couldn't get that out three ounces of lead donut sinker slides a little different over here though tonight six hot but it's an octopus hook not an octopus style circle hook just straight up octopus these you get a little luckier if you want to try and strike and do the hook set yourself but it's best left to let the fish do it himself all right three ounces of lead on a sinker slide again All right, big bait was first. Wow. This spot has a deep hole in it, if you can get out there. We're over a pretty steep drop off. Never had any problems fishing braid here. You should do pretty good. Just great because there's not a ship in front of us right now making a bunch of noise. That could change later tonight. <laughs> Put this on a lower rock. Put this right down in here towards the... There. This is from a barge that just went by. Might give us a bite. I kind of wish my friend Jared was here. He really loves going out into that sinky mud stuff to land fish. The deeper he sinks, the better. I mean, that's why he doesn't wear slides anymore. He doesn't like it. I'm just kidding. Here's an advantage I want to point out about having a really big fire ring. I can have coals over here where I'm cooking my food and I can have flame over here where I can stay warm if it gets cold. People freak out here in Southeast Louisiana when it's in the low 40s. So if people show up like the ones right there, hey, and they're freezing, there you go. Look at that guys, look at that tension building on that tip. That's the little bait. That is the little bait. That's the little bait. Woo, the little bait. Got us a nice one. Ooh, I got the... Yeah, you're right, finally. We had a couple of bites before this happened, before this knocked off. Ooh. Got a nice fire going. Gonna have some good, healthy food for dinner. And we're gonna pull in a big fish. Hopefully more than one. But this, this is feeling pretty nice. We need Jared here to do the mud walking. Ooh. Ooh, watch it be a gaff top with a 20 pound dumbbell in its hand. I mean, I know that's impossible because gaff tops don't have hands. Look at that. Still. Oh, he's not too far in front of us there. He's trying to top right now. I'm gonna go down there. Oh, 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 that is some massive beaver tail action right there. Yes. Ah. Uh. Oh, my goodness. Ah. Uh. It's a mini tank. Oh, he's on that mud. Ah. Uh. Oh, yeah, look at Haas. Haas slapping that tail. Yes, sir. Woo. Haas. Whoa, settle down, buddy. Definitely over the 20 pound mark right there. He might be out of the 20 pound class. Hey, dude, can you pick up my rod for me? And we'll walk up to the stuff. Cool, thanks. 
Yeah, yeah, you're right. I was about to do the unhooking and he's like, whoo, oh, oh, you got something. Yeah, I think we might. Look at that, guys, look. Look at that. Yes, here he is. Whoa, you guys came in the right, just at the right time. This is almost a double, one after another. It's a back to back. I'm gonna need a cup of tea after these two. I need a nice big hot cup of tea. Oh. Getting to where I don't like to drink coffee this deep in the afternoon. I'd rather have a cup of tea. Whoa. I don't know, it's not as big as that, this one over here. Keep a tight line. I got my fish grips. It's a decent one though. I'm skiing them in. Woo! I got Donkey Kong and Donkey Jr. I've caught much bigger blue cat than that, but that is quite good for the first fish of this session. Let me get them unhooked and we'll weigh them. Here we go. Not out of that 20 pound class, but the backyard of it, the back end of it, 26.77. Nice. Just because I have the scale out and everything, we want to see what the little one is. That's 15.57. Not bad. Woo. Little bruiser. Little Haas. Yeah, you're right. All right, got his cousin down here too. Woo! Back to back. Almost a double. Yeah, you're right. Woo! I am not keeping fish tonight. I'm gonna be too tired to cut fish later, but I don't like to keep sizes this big. And there goes. Woo! One foot is wet, dang it. Really thick mud here, but he's got it. Tonight I'm gonna have a Yorkshire tea. It's a black tea. Yes. If for some reason you ever need to know how I like my tea, it's milk with two sugars in the morning, milk with no sugar in the evening. There you go. I don't know why you need to know that, but you might. A little bit of a time check here. Well after sunset, it is 15 minutes to seven. Still got a good fire going. Got the food down there closer to the heat. It's still doing good. I'm not gonna pull it off quite yet. When my fire gets really, really hot like it is right now, just to keep it going, I'll put big wetter driftwood logs on top. It'll burn and they'll dry out. This smoke keeps whatever mosquito problems we have out here at bay. Plus I've got the fire set to the side to where the smoke is gonna go out over the river and not near me where I'm sitting watching the fishing poles. Oh, oh, hard to see because of so much smoke right now. Look at this. The big bait just went off. It's been quite a while since we had a bite. Just been sitting here in the dark. It is now about 7.30. Oh, oh, this is feeling good. I thought we were getting a bite on the small bait a second ago and I was watching that and then all of a sudden we might actually be getting a bite on the other rod. This feels pretty good. I would say the gaff top or just about gone I have not hit one what what has it been like three videos ago didn't hit any yesterday haven't hit any yet today 
Whoa, 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 whoa. He just, he just turned on a switch or something and all of a sudden, oh my God, it got white water out there. Beaver telling like he's messing with diesel right now. Oh, 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 oh no. We just had a massive hit on the small bait. We gotta get this fish in. I'm not sure what we got here. I'm gonna have to go look. It looks kind of... That's a big, big cat or something. What do we got? It's massively long. It's got a weird looking face. Let's get down here to where we can see what we got, what we're messing with here. Oh shit, sorry. Whoa, that lost everything there. This is a massive one. Yeah, it's just a big blue. I think in the smoke, smoke in my eyes and, oh shoot. The other line. Let me... We got another fish on the other line. Oh my God, I'm just fuddling around here. Yeah, this is massive. Come on, we got, a, got another fish coming in. This was going off while we were down there getting the fish grips on that other fish. It's got a slack line. I don't know. We either, I think we might be hooked up. I'm not 100% sure. Let me deal with the slack and see. I think so, yeah. Here he is. Yes. Oh my God. I didn't even need the fish grips. It's a stingray, dang it. I'm over here messing with this stingray and I didn't even see that side by side come down here. Out of that 20 pound class. 31.02, nice. Massive. Oh, we almost had a fish slap right there. Massive. Massive. Woo. Yeah. Nice. All right. Woo. There he goes. Nice. He's making it. He's doing good. So earlier, I think I said it was like 730. I think I was wrong because now it's 735. I didn't do all that in five minutes, did I? Maybe. But yeah, it is 735 now. Getting a bite on a small bait. A barge is going by too. Actually, it's two barges. There's one after another here. We've got one right in front of us and another one right behind that. I think they're barges. I'm, I know this one is a barge. The next one actually might be a small container ship. Can't see it that good, but I think I see cranes on it. This bite is so subtle. It's just a little bit of a bounce on that rod tip. Oh. Yes, oh my goodness. Oh, he took took it down. I think it's, are you here? Yes, here he is. That's two of these in a row. That makes two in a row. <laughs> that makes me, whew, I'm hungry. Hey, we got some crazy tension on the big bait. Is that a hookup? I think, yeah. Oh, please don't be a stingray. Oh, no. If it is, it's a massive one. Oh, I've already pulled the uh, food out of the fire pit. I've got it sitting there cooling a little bit so I can deal with it. Whew, I'm ready to eat. I'm ready to eat something. Oh, this feels better. Pretty slow night bite, but I'm not complaining. Good sizes. Oh, this has got some crazy fight to it. Oh, yes. 
Oh, he's already on the surface. Got another sizable fish here. Oh, he's beaver telling like crazy out there. I can see white water. He's kicking up a lot. We're gonna have to come this way because he's gonna, if I let him keep going down river, he's gonna get my line into that tree. I have not put the other rod out. I'm gonna come down these rocks, just watch my step. Ooh. He's just pretty much right in front of me, but he's fighting like crazy. Oh, he's massive. What, what do we got here? Look at that, throwing up white water. Pretty long, whatever we got. Oh, that's, oh my goodness. Holy moly, that is huge. That is absolutely a tank. Oh, it's gonna be a pain trying to release this one here. Massive. That is a massive blue cat. Massive, utterly massive. My goodness. Oh, he's gotta be over 30 for sure. Oh, I can barely get him up. Whoa, mother. Holy moly, I'm gonna unhook him. That'll be easier to transport him. That fish is big. Oh, come on, come on, settle down. Whoa. Definitely a two-hander. Oh my God. Massive. Massive. Massive, massive, massive. Oh my God. Whoa. 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 Oh, 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 oh. 39.02. Donkey. Donkey Kong. Woo. Yeah, you're right, guys. I hope this light's not blowing me out like last night. This fish is about blowing me out. Let me tell you, it's really, it's, I'm ready to eat. Time for dinner. This is a big boy. Yeah, you're right. They just kept getting bigger. I thought, whew, two stingrows, st stingrows, two stingrays in a row. I was like, man, I'm ready to eat and go. Well, I'm glad I didn't. Whew. Time to eat now, though. Come on. Oh. I had to get wet to release that fish. Oh, let's see if I can get out. Oh, yes, still got my shoes on. Oh, oh, oh. look at the juices are just flowing out of that. Yeah, you're right. Freezing now. Woo. Woo. I meant to bring that folding table out here, but I forgot. That table that that subscriber sent. Oh, juicy. Oh, yeah. Look at those Brussels sprouts. Oh, I kept this. I kept actually both of them on the outside of the fire. I never really put them on top of a lot of coals. I wanted them to cook slow while I was busy catching tanks out here. I got the top facing up. So this is the cap. Ooh, I'm just going to take the fork and slice this tinfoil open. Oh, yeah. Let's get that cap off to the side. And there's the plug. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to take a bite of this right now, guys. Oh, my goodness. I outdid myself. I most certainly did. That is awesome. Let's get out one of these Brussels sprouts here. Oh my God, you wouldn't like it. Oh, it's good. Hoo -hoo. Mm. Oh yeah. Messy too. Mm, that's the best part about it. Oh, tell you what guys, I only wanted to eat a little bit of this here. I'm gonna pack it, take it home. It'll still be hot. I'm gonna enjoy it there. That way my dogs can just stare at me while I eat. <laughs> it 
Yeah, you're right. This was a, a really fun session, like unbelievable. There were a lot of times where I thought, huh, nothing's gonna happen. After those two fish, there was like a, a serious hour and a half to almost two hours of nothing. But wow, not complaining. What a night, pretty fun, good food, big fish. What more do you want? Yeah, you're right. Thanks for watching guys and subscribing. And I'll, I, <laughs> I'll see you next time.